This short video is going to talk about how we can create an outline for this class. Now we've talked about the parts of an introduction, we've talked about the parts of the body, the parts of the conclusion, and now I just want to go over some of the things we need to think about when we're actually creating an outline for the various speeches we'll do in this class. So let's start out with just the bare bones things we know have to go into an outline. These are the things we know have to go into it. In our introduction, we need to have these five parts. When we go into the body, we need to have some points and subpoints. When we have our conclusion, we have to have those three parts as well. So, from here, we're going to come up with an outline. All right, so let's talk about what we need to do. First thing I want you to notice is that I want you to see that I have organized this very clearly so that I can understand what parts go with what parts of our introduction, what parts go with point one, point two, and point three. So when you're creating your outline, please use the out or the um the uh, I guess it is the outlining function in Word or something along those lines to make this make more sense to me. So when I'm reading your outline, I can very clearly tell in your introduction you know you need to have the attention getter, credibility, relevance, thesis statement, and preview statements. Okay, that type of thing that'll help me follow your outline more clearly. And since an outline is supposed to help me follow your speech more clearly, this just makes sense. The last thing you're going to notice down here at the bottom, in addition to the introduction, the body parts, and the conclusion, is that I include a justification statement. On each of your speeches, I'd like you to include a justification statement as to why you decided to use the organization pattern you used. Now, when we get into actually talking about per persuasive and informative speeches, you'll understand more about what I mean by which type of pattern you're using, but for now, just understand it needs to be there. So let's pretend that we're giving a speech about how to make low sodium pasta sauce from scratch. All right, that's the speech that we're going to be giving today. It's a how-to type of speech, all right? Now you'll notice that as I'm doing this, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a thesis statement. And the reason I'm doing that is our thesis statement, remember, gives the specific goals of what we're going to accomplish with our speech. So for instance, let's say that my thesis statement is today, my goal is to inform you oops, about how to make low sodium pasta sauce from scratch, right? Because the thesis statement is the guiding statement for the entire speech, it's really important that that's the first thing that we do. All right, now from here, maybe I'm going to jump into what I need to talk about. And let's see, the first thing I need to think about when we're, when we're telling people how to, how to do something is the stuff that goes into doing it. So for instance, maybe my point one is going to be ingredients. And maybe as I'm thinking about ingredients, I think about, well, there are some required ingredients, but then there's some ingredients you don't really necessarily need to have. So there's some, maybe some optional ingredients. Okay. So this is my main point and these would be my subpoints. Underneath each subpoint, you'll notice I also have some additional spaces for other subpoints. So sub subpoints you could call them. I'll be filling those in in a second. Let's see. So okay, after I have the ingredients, I know my audience is going to want to know how to actually cook down the tomatoes. So maybe that's going to be my second part is cooking down the tomatoes. That's going to be my second point. And let's see the last part obviously is going to be having how we, how we finish up the, uh, probably finish the sauce. Okay, so now we have these body points in here. We have the general idea of what we're going to be talking about. Now that we have these main body points, we can fill in our previous statement because we know that. So the previous statement is going to be the ingredients, cooking down the tomatoes, and finishing the sauce. All right, that's all that previous statement needs to be. So we're jumping around a little bit here, right? As we finish up one part, it helps us be able to create another part. You'll notice also, now we can put our review statement in there. So our review statement might be something like, we talked about how to make low sodium pasta sauce from scratch by talking about, and then let's just copy and paste our previous statement because we've got all of our main points in there then. So we've got copy and we paste it in there, right? That's all we need to do for that review statement. All right, 
So now that we've done this, we need to start filling in some of these other holes. So in terms of required ingredients, let's say we need to have 10 Roma tomatoes cut in half. We need to have seven cloves of garlic minced. Let's see. And we need to have Italian seasoning. All right, and specifically within our speech, we may have to tell them more specifically exactly how much Italian seasoning, but that'd be something to think about. Um, optional ingredients might include other seasonings, such as oregano, basil, or thyme, um, browned hamburger, oops, tomato paste, or brown sugar. You're getting the idea, right? So as we're going through, we're starting to fill in these different parts of each individual point. Then, once we get that type of thing taken care of, maybe that's what we got done next, the next thing we can do is we can go up here to, for instance, our relevant statement. Okay, so why, do, why does our audience care about this? Well, let's say that we learned that uh, decreasing sodium yields health benefits. like, I don't know, say X, Y, and Z. And obviously you'd want to go find what those are. And then we want to make sure we connect that specifically to our audience. We say since, uh, since we could all use those benefits and I'm sure we like tasty food, this is a good skill for us to learn. All right, so we've, we've said in general why we should care about this, but then specifically tied it to our audience. All right, let's talk about why we're credible about this. Maybe I'm a credible source about this because during pregnancy, I had to use a low sodium diet, which is true. And I made this sauce several times after looking at several recipes online. So I worked out all the kinks and you reap the benefit of all the things I've learned. Something like that. Okay? All right. So now we've got our credibility, relevance, thesis, preview statements. We need to get our attention getter, our audience action, and our closing line, as well as our justification statement. Now, obviously, you could you'd finish filling in these body points as well. I just don't think I need to walk you through that. So let's say for our attention getter, we say that we want to have a, some shocking fact about how much pasta sauce is eaten each year in the United States, right? Something like that. Now, you can start out with this when you're doing your first outline. You want to have some shocking fact about this. And then later on, as you're going in and doing your research, you're going to want to actually come back and fill those in. So then, our closing line is probably going to have something to do with our attention getter. So we'd want to say something about, so maybe some of the whatever percentage of pasta sauce eaten each year will now include your homemade low sodium sauce. Tasty and healthy. Right? Something like that. Right? So we've got some kind of a closing having to do with that. And then we have to have our audience action. Maybe we say, we want to say, uh, with this knowledge, you now have the ability to try this recipe if you would like. To, or if you at some point need to use a low sodium diet, right? Remember, because it's an informative speech, we don't want to say you should try cooking this because that would be a persuasive audience action. We want to make this an informative thing for them to be able to say, now that you have this information, you could do this if you wanted to, right? Last thing we probably need to do is create that justification statement. Now, again, this will make more sense after we get into talking about specific organization patterns, but for instance, in this case, I might say, I chose the uh, chronological uh, 
sequential speech pattern because it helped to organize for my audience members the process that they would need to go through step by step if they wanted to make this sauce. Right? So you have some kind of a justification, tell me which pattern you chose and why it made the most sense for your specific topic. So now you know what I'm looking for out of your introductions, in gen or out of your, uh, your outlines in general. Some speech assignments may have additional requirements and you're going to want to look at each individual speech assignment to make sure you're getting done with everything you need to get done with for each outline. But remember, you're going to need one of these for each of your speeches. And again, obviously you'd want to finish filling in points three and four. So it might look something like this if it was all done. And then you have your full speech. I hope this was helpful.